Bonjour, my name is David DeVere. I'm a wine educator and traveler, and you're watching Savvy Nomad TV. This is the Voix d'eau edition, part five of buying a boat in France, specifically an inland waterway vessel. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about size. And when you talk about a boat, specifically in Europe's inland waterways, size really does matter. Okay, so in the last episode, which is linked here, I talked about how you get a license, obtaining the ICC or whatever your national certification system is. Of course, if you don't have a national certification system, you need an international certificate of competency and that international certificate of competency will generally cover you up to 20 meters in length. That's a 65 foot vessel. However, in Holland, it'll cover you to 25 meters, but on the Rhine River, it will only cover you to 15 meters. And the reason I reflect on this is because 15 meters is a massive break point, that's about 49 feet, in the design concepts of many boats. If you have a boat that is 14.99 meters, and you see a lot of manufacturers making bo boats right up to that limit, you are going to benefit greatly from a host of things that will help you cruise the waterways. What are those? I'm going to go into some of those right now. When talking about inland waterway boats and de boat design, you can hardly not use the word barge, but barge really talks about a style of boat. And there's another style that's also needs to be considered, and that's a Dutch cruiser, and I'll put pictures of both of these things up so you can see what they look like. Now, barges often are older boats that have been converted from carrying bulk materials on England waterways to now carrying people, and they act like a little house or an apartment. And all over Europe, people live in these as a full-time residence. It's not uncommon, you see it all over, but these barges come with some major limitations if you want to move them. So you have to think very carefully about what you want. How do you want your boat laid out? How long do you want your boat? And what is your intended purpose? If you just want a boat to live on in a canal somewhere in France or even at an arsenal marina in Paris, you could do that. You could buy an old barge and you can live on it. And some of them, a lot of them have been converted quite nicely and they're really not that expensive. Speaking of money, prices of boats vary greatly. You can spend hundreds of thousands of euros on a boat or you can spend tens of thousands of euros on a boat. Condition and design really are the two things you think about. I'm not going to go into shopping for boats necessarily. I will mention later on in the video where I find boats to look at, but you need to think about how many bedrooms you need, how many bathrooms you need, how much interior space you need, and you should consider exterior space because a lot of these boats are steel built. They're built quite heavily and they have interior space, but they also have exterior terraces for eating outside, living outside, piloting the vessel outside. Some of these older boats don't have that. So what they try to do is convince you that inside space is the valuable thing you have to have a living room, a grand salon, where there's a room in the bow and a room in the stern. And that's it. You've got two bedrooms and maybe two bathrooms and a nice big living room. Well, I often think, wait a minute, what if I want to take six people? I don't want someone sleeping on the couch. So I look for boats that are three cabin designed boats and those are harder to find but not impossible. 
Okay, I started this by talking about length, and length really plays into this because if you get a boat that's over 20 meters, there are a number of limitations that come with that. One is it can be hard to find moorage for a boat that big. Two, you need special certification for that boat. Specifically, you need an ESTRIN, European Standard Technical Requirement Inland Waterway. That boat needs to have a survey, it needs, which would probably be a haul out, and then it has to have a specialist come on and check things like fire extinguishers, life jackets. It needs to be completely gone over and receive that certificate. Depending on the country where your boat is registered, that certificate will be good for a certain amount of time. Belgium, it's five years. Netherlands, it's seven. France, it's 10. And in Germany, who knows? The Germans do, I guess. But you need to think about that because at over 20 meters, your boat's going to have new rules and requirements because it's starting to pinch onto commercial. It's starting to act like a commercial vessel, even though you don't use it that way, you just boat around. So the canal boat rental companies never rent boats over 15 meters. They make their boats just up to that 15 meter mark, and that's because the benefits are you don't need this special certification, and it's easier to find moorage, and you don't have to have a special license if you rent the boat. Now, if you buy the boat, you need a license, but 15 meter break point is very nice. One reason is because you can use the Rhine River, which acts like an interstate in Europe. You could take a boat from Strasbourg, where my boat is kept. You could take it all the way through Belgium and into Holland. It could take a couple months. Or you could pop onto the Rhine and you could be down in Holland in 10 days. It's really quite fast. But if your boat is over 15 meters, forget it. You need a pilot. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> That's crazy. So when shopping for a boat, you should consider its length very carefully. Do you need that extra salon? Does that extra salon come with outside living? When are you going to use the boat and what are you going to use it for? How many people do you want to travel with? The other things you need to consider are draft, that's the water line and under. What is the draft of the boat? And air draft is very important. This is the space from the water line up to the top of the boat. And that's important because you need to know if you can fit under a bridge, a fixed arched bridge, because there are a lot of them. In Holland, they all lift, but in France, there's a lot of fixed bridges and your boat may not fit. Now, a number of the canals in France were standardized uh, in the late 1800s by Charles de Faision. I think I've said that correctly. I'll put his name here. And they have standardized it so that a boat should have an, a draft of less than 1.8 meters, a length of less than 38.5 meters, that's 127 feet, and a width of less than 5.05 meters. So there's your technical requirements, but if your boat is over 38 meters or 38 meters, or anywhere close to that, there's going to be a number of canals that are not going to be able to satisfy you. But that draft, 1.8, and then the air draft really needs to be 3.5 meters or less. Now, Dutch cruisers. The Dutch cruising boats are all made out of steel. There are a number of different brands available, uh, like... Uh, uh, Linson, um, Mulder, um, I'll put a bunch of lists here. My favorite, and I think probably the sexiest looking ones, are what they call super van crafts. But while these boats are beautiful, they may not necessarily be great at 
all size points. Some are over 20 meters. Some have a draft more than one, uh, 1.8. And they are kind of this combination between ocean and river. They're designed for the Dutch cruising community. And people like to go out into the ocean, go up to the islands in Friesland and areas around there, as well as cruise the Dutch canals. So you have to think about that. Will that draft affect where I want to go and what I want to do with the boat? If I was shopping for a boat, I would look for the least amount of draft possible. Draft and air draft. I would want the most amount of bedrooms possible, the most amount of bathrooms possible, and I would want the shortest boat possible because that's going to make it cheaper at the marina and it's going to make it easier to moor the boat. A lot of little communities around France in particular have small community marinas, but if your boat's over 20 meters, or really even over 15, uh, they don't want you. They don't have space for a large barge like that. They are planning and receiving EU funds to make marinas to invest in waterway tourism, but at that 15 meter mark, not really above it. So be careful because size matters. The last thing to consider about size is the price of the moorage at the marina. At that 15 meter mark, things below smaller than 15 usually fit in a cheaper price category and things above 15 are more expensive. How much more? It can be maybe 25, 30% more. Now marinas are generally more affordable in Europe than they are in the United States, certainly cheaper than they are in the Pacific Northwest, where you pay a lot for a marina. But size does make that difference. That 15 meter mark is really quite important. This summer in Strasbourg, there was a boat that came in to the transit dock and uh, it was owned by a nice uh, couple from California. But it was 38 meters long, and I wonder if they when they invited the owner of the marina on board for a lunch, if they were trying to get moorage for the winter. Uh, they didn't, and I don't think he had space to accommodate that big boat anyway. They actually had hired crew on board to help them with that large vessel. So really ask yourself, if you want all of that interior or even exterior space, how much do you need? For me, the 15 meter mark was the big decider. Okay, where do you find a boat? Well, there's a website called Yacht Focus. There's also an app that you can download and new boats from brokers or private parties are added to that all the time. This is a Dutch uh, centric yacht search engine and it's a great place to find boats for sale. So you would look on Yacht Focus, then you would contact the broker and you would start negotiating. That's it. That's how you do it. Uh, again, the DBA is a great reference for this. So once you find your boat, you might want to go on to the DBA member only area and see if you can understand the rules and regulations about that boat and that specific size. Now, I'm going to take a break from these videos for about a month. I'll be back in January of 2023. If you can see a link to, a, to the next part six video, then, then you know I've made it and I'll continue making these videos on boats as we go forward. That next video is going to be about registering, paying for, and all the little bits and pieces like insurance that you need to do once you have found your boat and negotiated a price and are buying it. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and I hope to see you in the next episode. Leave me a comment if you uh, have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. And until then, I say a tutelaire and cheers.